Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm back on live with my sister and my friend, <laughs> uh, GMT coach Eunice Thomas. Uh, she's been speaking with us earlier, but we had a slight uh, challenge with the network. So she's been talking about leadership and motherhood. And uh, just before the slight interruption, I was asking about the role of the mother in the family as a leader. So can you just speak to that, please? I want to apologize. <laughs> okay. I, I said that as a leader, you have to um, turn to, you start from the source. You start from the source. Okay. So you turn to God and say, this is where I am. This is where you have brought me. What about it? What do you want from me? How do you want me to serve you? Yeah. What is the purpose? And then you turn to the man that God gives to you. That's your purpose partner. And ask him, what is the goal of our union? Why are we together at this time? What do you want to see? What do you want out of this union? So for myself and my own partner, it is that we want to go old together. We want to prepare each other for eternity. And we want to be loved by the children and love them too. We want to see the grandchildren and we want to hold hands. And then we want to meet our creator in peace. So we are not ever going to leave one another. And we are going to keep this private, which means that we will allow people to bring their suggestions, we will not allow people to talk into our own um, purpose. We will always look up to God and then we will reduce, we will try as much as possible to create buffers through love so that there will be not too many frictions. And even when there will be friction, it will not be coerced, not coerced to tear us or to scratch us evidently we will have to savor the love that we have for each other and ensure that we are in the moment together every time. That is the leadership that we have and that is what we are showing to the children. So the, the techniques that we use is that we will use tender words, we will use kind words, even when we are demanding, we will explain ourselves all of the time and we will give opportunity to the other yeah. person to also explain themselves. We will, as much as possible, try to step into people's shoes and listen to understand, not listen to reply. We will always, wow. always put water in our mouth when we are having conversations. So, And the water, we won't swallow that water and we won't, we won't talk so we don't spill it. So we put the water in the mouth and hold it so that the other person can talk through and then we can ask questions. But in asking questions, we do not confront. So we have developed these techniques, you know, over time. And again, there's a rule in our home that you don't wake anybody up to talk about any issue. We make the bread. Wow. The you know, yes, we try to create an oasis in the family, and that's the bedroom. So you don't tell anybody, wake up, let's talk about this. No, 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 no. no. We will talk about it at the dinner so table. So that as we rise from wow. dinner, we go to sleep. Wow, wow, amazing, amazing. Now, um, I just want to, who is your, you know, I mean, how was your childhood? You know, your mom, did your mom play any major role in your formative years? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My mom was my only friend my best friend, my only friend ever. Wow. And she was a princess, wow. you know, Calabar women. She was a princess. So she taught me to love. My mother told me that wow. you need an identity. You must be known for something. You know, she told me you must be known for something. And that whatever you're known for today while you are alive is what you will be remembered for when you are gone. So be quick and then early enough, get known, because who knows how long you're going to be here. So get known for something. And I asked myself, people have been known for everything. What am I going to be known for? And I said, I'll be an icon of love. I will fill my heart with love, and I will love anybody that I meet. I will love everybody that I come across in my life. So because I had made that promise ahead of my marriage, ahead of all my other relationships, immediately I meet somebody, it is quick for me to activate the promise that I made to myself. And it's more fulfilling to me. I enjoy it. When I love you, 
I enjoy the feeling that I get. I fulfill that, oh yes, this promise that I made to myself, I'm actually fulfilling. So that was what she taught me. And then she also wow. taught me, she also taught me that um, the role of a mother, you know, varies. That sometimes you're a friend, sometimes you're a teacher, sometimes you're a coach, sometimes you help. So she taught me, she said that in the youthful days, you know, when the children are really young, that you apply this concerted cultivation, you coach the children. But when they are grown, you're, they are grown, there's something called passion facilitation. You now facilitate the passion, whatever it is the child wants to do or has chosen to do, you help them facilitate, you know, that passion for them and ensure that they succeed. You do that by allowing them to make mistakes and positioning yourself to um to you know buffer the mistakes, the effect of the mistake, that you're pushing the effects, you you stand at a safe position for them to run to. And that when they come, you don't say, I told you. She said, I should never say to my child, I told you. I should not say to my husband, didn't I tell you? I should just say, it's okay, it's an experience. We have both learned from it. We can grow from there. I should teach them to forgive themselves and advance, um, you know, their purposes. So that's, that's what's been helping. Now, I, I just want to find out, um, what is the... Um consequence of a mother not uh, playing a role as a mother in the family wow we have seen it when you when you neglect your you see how did it all start it was never like this the the women decided to to change roles and this is the confusion you see, when as women you're told that you have to go out there, you can break the glass, you can be the head, you can actually be this, you can be that, we confuse ourselves. We think that the role of the woman at home is, is negligible, it is not significant, it is not true. The man is out there doing the big things in the boardrooms because you're back here doing the little things that he cannot do at this time. He is unable to do, he has abandoned or are not his priorities at this time. The man is out there, you know, globetrotting, doing so much to bring big money, taking big risks. Because you're here, he's sure that there's somebody looking at the children, looking after them and checking on his mother checking on his siblings, you know, so he's able to focus and do the job. Imagine that both of you are out there doing the big thing when the children are still young, when every when that when when you're most vulnerable, who covers for whom? So complementarity remains the only key in marriage and in the homes. The leadership principle that I apply in marriage is the principle of complementarity. When the children were much younger, I had to sit back and nurture them. And when they grew up and they could stand, I mean, now remotely guide them, I could move and do the big things as well. So it's important to understand the sensitive time and get the timing right. There is no need for any competition in any home. There isn't a need. There is no need at all. Yeah. Who are best to relax these competitions and stop telling women. You see, the, 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 the strength, the power, the, the, the intensity with which we are asking for power for the women isn't matched with an equal intensity with which we are telling men to be vulnerable, to share the power. Mm. So we are not getting the balance. As we raise the woman to be strong, we should also raise the man to give away, to be vulnerable. When was the last time you saw a man's tears? Mm as a woman, eh? you know, they refuse to cry because they've been left in this human, this man, masculine void, you know, performance-based um, center of action. You are the, in fact, only by strength that like you're a man. So somebody wants to cry, they tell you, be a man, be a man. It is not right. Men are humans. Men are humans. So we should teach people to approach men as human beings. And leave them to also process their emotions, to shed tears when they want to, you know? So, because the things that we burden the men wow. with are the things that wow. make them need to show. 
Yes, that the things that make them live unhappy lives and live short lives. They bottle up too many things because of what the society expects from them. And that's for me. The woman at home has a role to tell the man, listen, you're a human being. You were once somebody's baby. You feel what I feel. Do you want to cry? Go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that. So, you wow. know, you can hope that. Wow. Yeah. So it's good to allow the man to cry. <laughs> it's That's important. interesting. It's very important. But may not shed tears, but you have to allow me. Has been very... Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> no, no, you know? no. Men cry in many ways. That, that men cry be... in silence, men cry in solitude, and men shed tears. We should allow them to process that. Don't, we should not hammer on the man that you have to, the only, the only um, um, parameter for success, the only index of success is when you are able to do everything when you are able to do everything, when you are the cops at the funeral, you are the bride at the wedding, when you get all the attention, when you when you do what nobody else can do, that is what says that you are a man. It's not true. It's not true. That competition, that wow. comparison, is what is killing our men. Wow, wow. So, so you mean that sh there shouldn't be any competition between men and women? Mm -mm. They should rather be collaboration to complement each other. Wow. Yes. Wow. 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 So it should be more of collaboration instead of competition. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Now, um, you're, you're having a program coming up very shortly. Can you speak to that program, Humanity Conference? <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. Um, I don't want to miss the opportunity of a global pandemic. I wasn't here in 1918. <laughs> I was not here. I, but I read about it. I heard about it. People lost their jobs. People gained things. People created things. There were innovations. Some people died. Some people did not die. But some people People came alive and some just didn't die. You know, we've had so many stories that are different accounts. People wrote books, people did many things. So I am sure that we are experiencing such um, such changes at this time. So I am bringing everybody together and telling people now that this has come to dehumanize us, to dematerialize us, and to fully bring us to reality. Are there no ways that we can drop? some level of competition and begin to complement ourselves. Are there things in our culture, our traditional backgrounds, our religion, our society and environment that have kept us bound and that have deprived us and have deprived you know, the universe, humanity from its best experience of us? Can we now just come together, mobilize our skills, talents and resources and then serve humanity the best that we can now that we have seen wow. that everything that we are anchored on has failed. Our jobs have failed. Mm -hmm. Most relationships have been postponed. <laughs> Any things have changed. All of the things that we trusted, that we believed in, the economy, everything, everything, even movements have been, you know, on the hold. Can we now just come in and look at the things that can make us better, make us not better, unify us, and then serve humanity the best that we can. So at the conference, we'll be talking from topics ranging from your personality all the way to your relationships, but at home and at work, to your finances, to your health, to your um, mentality, to your to the state of affairs in our homes and our offices, down, down, down to our international trade and policies, we are covering almost every topic, all in the bid to harness our potentials, our skills and our talents, and look at our innovations, look at our every area of our interaction and bring the best that we can offer to humanity. That is what will be happening on the 28th. Wow, wow. And the 29th. 29th. Okay, now this, this program, uh, what, what is, um, I know it's a virtual, is it, why is it virtual? Is it because of the pandemic or 
Are you having actual and virtual or? Um, well, we want to unveil it virtually yet. We'll go virtual okay. because of the pandemic. Some of the, yes, some of okay. the borders are not open. So the, um, yes, A borders, land borders, C borders, most borders are yet to be opened. But it is important that we launch out so that after the first virtual conference, we will now begin to tour the globe with the off-site, uh, on-site conferences. Okay. Okay. Now, I want to I want to ask, you know, there are a lot of um, uh, career women that are mothers. How is it, you know, how is it, is it for a mother to balance the career and also, you know, play an active role in the home? Okay. Um, what you first of all do is liberate community. You cannot raise the child all by yourself. So you look at people that you trust and assign roles to them, but you monitor. So it's just mechanism. You can set, you know, times for one thing, the other thing. Oh, they wake up at this time. They say their prayers at this time. They have the bed at this time. They have breakfast at this time. Leave for school at this time. Return at this time. Play for so so minutes. Go to sleep. Wake up. Do their homework and submit to you. But you have to. You must check in with them twice in a day. You have to. Wow. So that you can, wow. yes, so that they also relate with you, so that you feel them. It is at the place of conversation with a child that you understand their temperaments. The words that they use will tell you the future, the kinds of persons that they are, and the kinds of personalities that they they have. So it is important that on your own you try and close in with the children twice in a day. Wow. When you say twice, is it the morning or in the evening? It depends. You can have it in the morning and bedtime. Or for me, it's good to wake the child up. You see, when your child has gone to bed and you wake them up to speak with them and they give you attention, it means that you matter and that what you have matters. But when the child doesn't wake up, and speak to you and tells you, mom, call tomorrow. Mom, I'm already asleep. Then you know that you don't matter. Not like you don't matter much, but the child doesn't understand that you should talk anytime. Yeah. Wow. wow. So, when so, you, so when you were in government, you know, as a commissioner in your state for education, how easy was it was it for you to balance, you know, your role as, you know, a public officer with that of being a mom? Because I know you were. I put in 10 years into mothering the children. And okay. then, the, the, then you know, my, my, my daughter is first. So I had taught her to check on the boys. And then I had to be calling them. And then I, we had to be bringing them. You know, some days I'll ask the driver, go and bring the children. So he'll bring them unannounced. And I would go home to them unannounced as well. I ensured that we spent time together. And like I said, I had my sister-in-law, my my husband's sister with us. I also had my own sister with them. So we had family. And, you know, it's very important that you have both um, members from both homes in your home so that you can integrate both families and get them to understand that these children are their own that they are on give them equal access but give them equal responsibilities and then um you should be not i i i chose not to bring in um strangers to live with us so i had only members of our families come together and um, help us with raising the children well at the same time we were also you know helping to raise them so it was very easy for me the structure had been set Wow, amazing. What would you say to young ladies? Every time my child was transitioning, maybe from primary to secondary and all that, I would take a break and check in with the child to teach them to cook, to teach them, you know, to um, arrange the space, you know, to prepare them for the next stage. So I used to take that break from my bosses and they understood and they would gradually the, the, the break. But I would be working remotely 
for government at that time, but I'll physically have to be with that child that I'm preparing for the next stage. Wow, amazing. Now, what would you say to young mothers that are just coming up? I mean, for someone that's just been married for two years or three years and is trying to cope with raising a child, being a mother, being a, a career person, what would you say to such a person right now? Uh, first of all, take a deep breath. You are welcome to the new world. Um, the times are tough, so you have to make money to support your husband and to look after the children. And please, um, I don't know whatever anybody tells you. I don't believe in children's church. I don't believe in going to church and having the children in another, you know, in another section. I try to wow. sit with the children. Yes, wow. I sit with the children because I need them to understand what we are there for. And I watch them while we are there. You know, I I watch them. I watch how they, they relate with themselves. I watch what they do with their offerings. I watch whom they give to as well. I watch how they pray. I, I need to see that they, they understand what we are doing in church. Church is not a place to go and watch cartoon or to be playing. Because the person that is in the children's church has come to listen to the word of God as well. So every children's church uh, teacher is already in church himself or herself. So the child is the only one left out from our church services. That's one too. When older people come into church, I need to see how my child is respectful enough to stand up and have the person sit. I need to see how my child tells the, the sibling not to make noise in church. I need to see my own daughter as we are going to church. Back in the days, she will tell the boys, everybody, as we are light from the car, she's telling them all to go and ease themselves because as they enter church, nobody's stepping out, you know? And then you will give them extra offerings. And then I, until one time I told them, okay, I will no longer be giving you offering. Take from your savings and give to God. Let's see, you know? And then... Try also to give to people that you see in church that you deem do not have enough. So it's important, it's important that you study the child. And then for a young mother today, please, please don't put your child in children's church. If the child must be in children's church, the mother must be in children's church. Okay. Stay there with okay. your child, yes. Yeah. So that you watch your child. Your child has uh, biscuits, has snacks. Then the child should share. And if the child doesn't share, then the child should not take. And then be mindful of what the child is doing in church. Children go to church and they learn to fight. They learn to snatch things from you. They learn to choose friends. We shouldn't be, not at that age. Wow. You know? So it's wow. important that a young to pay attention to those details and please, you have to teach the child early. You know, these days of washing machines, it's very difficult to have the children wash their undies and their socks. You, they must do that with their hands because, I mean, personal hygiene is very important, but at the same time, they must learn to wash with their hands. They must learn to sweep. I know that there are hovers, there are house helps and cleaners and all, but the child must learn this. Again, your child you know you have to examine the child you must you must so you after the child has showered as a mother you have to sniff the child's body oh you did not clean this part can't clean this part do this do that do that and it's really really important it is very important because it works on the child's self-esteem it works on the child's self-esteem and then don't mock don't mock the child don't mock the child what does that mean? Yes. Yeah. What does that you mean? You see, when when children don't do things right, you say, "Hey, somebody is going to somebody is going to uh, write nonsense now. Somebody does not know how to pronounce that thing, and then the children laugh at them. It's not it's not good. It's a bad thing because it tempers the child's self esteem. Instead, say, "Come, honey, I hope you're not going to make this mistake again. We are say this say it this way. Try and say it this way. This is the correct way to say it. If you say it ten times without making that mistake again, then you're perfect." and I'll give you something. You know, reward everything. Reward the child. Reward the child. And then do not, to correct the child does not mean that you must punish the child. Discipline is different from punishment. Don't be punitive. Be disciplinary in your actions with the child. Always cause the child to make you a promise. 
I will never do wow. this again because why I want to do it again? Every time I do it, it, I hurt you. So I will not do this again, you know? And what if wow. you do it again? Mom, if I do it again, then you may not talk, to, you may not speak to me for two days. Get to that point where when you don't speak to your child for two days, it will mean more than beating the child and all of that. And I tell you that time will never come because the child will never want to see you hurt. So it's very, it's very, very important. And please don't argue with their father in their presence. In fact, don't just argue, whether in their presence or not. Give the man time to express himself and take it in, think about it, and then go. Honey, I'm thinking about that thing that you said. I've been thinking about it. Can I make some suggestions? Look at what I think we can do. But, you know, please just think about it again. You know, it's, it's make it easy and make the home, you know, peaceable for the children to grow well. Uh, wow. Now, you know, sometimes children can blackmail, you know, both parents. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, yeah, <laughs> you know, when it comes to uh, a child, you know, that has done something wrong, can go to the mom and cry and say, oh, dad has been trying to speak to me in such a way that I'm not happy. And the mom can just, you know, if the mom doesn't, you know, uh, manage her emotions well, she can, you know, become so upset with the, with the dad. How do you how do you deal with such issues to prevent a child from blackmailing? You know that child, first off, first off, you must be sensitive enough to know that this child will not be in this place with you. The child is a guest to your home. That's what you have to know. The person that you have started with is the person that you were close with. So you tell the child, I know my husband. I know my husband. I am going to speak to him. Give me time. Let me speak to your daddy, okay? And then you approach your daddy. Hey, your boy has been crying with you. You have been bullying my child. What's happening with, the, with you guys? And then the father will now speak. You will say, you. You didn't think well when you started shouting at that boy. The boy has changed. He has done this. He has done that. You should look now. You instead of dashing my boy something, you shout, don't do like this, please. Let me bring him. And when he comes, please listen to him. You mediate. You cannot take sides. You have to be careful not to take sides because once you start taking sides, the child now has you as an ally. And what the man will be struggling with will be to defend himself. So sometimes he won't even want to hear. I mean, you must be careful not to take sides at all. That's the truth. Wow. Just try your wow. best to do it, yeah. Now, when it comes to mothers and, you know, their children in school, you know, how, how, how and teachers, uh, issues with teachers and, you know, those children. And we have situations where mothers go to schools and, you know, tell the teacher off. Is, is that right? <laughs> no, it is not. It is not right. So what, what should be right. done? I mean, a child comes to and you know screams and say, "Mom, my teacher, you know, told me off." Children my are teacher funny. Is Children are very funny. Children are very funny. To be, of course, as a mother, you already know the burden of raising a child. It is not an easy thing. Children are really funny and very dramatic. They see a child do something, they want to do the same thing, or they even want to do opposite. And when they are doing their own, they want to do it extremely. So what you do is after your child has come home, I mean, you, you, there's a part, of, there's a role of patience. You need to employ it and sit back. Of course, you know the role of five seconds, you know the seventh breath. And like I said, put water in your mouth and don't talk so you don't spill it. Don't also swallow the water, hold it. If your child comes back with a complaint, lift one shoulder and wait. When you meet the teacher, you can now raise the to, or you can drop one. Take your time, go to that teacher. Um, my sister or my brother is so good. I know the work you're doing with these children, but something broke my heart yesterday. I, 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 uh, uh, my child came home and said, you did this, you did that. I don't want to believe that you did that. What happened, please? Do you have the time to explain to me? Because whether or not you like it, you have to respect the teacher. Your child spends most of the time of the day with that teacher and the best part of your child is defined by that teacher so you 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 talk with the teacher and then they explain to you and then you say you see my sister this is what you should have done at this point 
I don't know how you're going to speak to this child to understand that you meant well, but let me call him or let me call her. When you're talking with the teacher, the child mustn't be there. Wow. The child okay, so the child was and then you can now the invite must not be there. Them. Yes. Must not be there. The child must not be there. When you speak to a teacher, an adult before a child, you make the person small. You make the person small. And don't forget, you won't be in that school all the time. You will still leave the child in the care of that teacher. So you have to understand the sensitive role of the teacher in your child's life. You can now bring the child over. Honey, teacher also has tried to say that she did not mean that. What you felt was not what my intention was. So you're going to say sorry to her because I'm sure you upset her before she screamed at you or before she even hit you. So say sorry. He says sorry. And then you tell the teacher, please, can you speak to the child? The teacher now explains herself. And then you say, okay, this should not happen again. My sister, please. And then take the, child, the teacher's number. When you get home, call the teacher. You brought me to your school today. I should not have come. Please ensure that I don't come back. I'm leaving my child in your care. Do your best to care for this child. Who knows who is caring for your own child in future? I beg you, my sister, please just help you here. I am sorry. You know how children are. Try to establish a relationship with that teacher. Don't go there and show power. Wow. That is not your office. Uh, it's not your office. Wow. When you leave that child there, that teacher can kill that child. Yes. If that teacher is wicked, wow. the teacher can actually wow. the child. Yes. Wow. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. I've been speaking with Eunice Thomas all the way from Aqua Ibom. Uh, she's uh, a fascinating lady. She's speaking about leadership and motherhood. And uh, we've been talking about the role of a mother in the home and how the mother can show up and provide the kind of leadership. Um, she's uh, someone that is not just uh, a speaker, she's also been in the public sector as a commissioner for education in Apaibon. And uh, she's, she understands what it is to be a professional and also to be a mother as well, and also to be um, in the leadership space. Now, you just wrote a book on, on womanity, you know. Uh, can you speak about that book? Just share a few things about yeah. your book. Okay, um, that, book is, um, that book is a collection of laws. It has 12 laws. The book is titled A Dozen Laws of Humanity. You see, a woman, yeah. a, woman, a, woman has, a woman is malleable. A woman has many sides. A woman can be anything. A woman can... Please, can you just be more in that, continue? Carry on. Please, carry on, carry on. Yes. You know. One minute. Yeah. All right. Bible says that um, in the book of Jeremiah, Bible says, why do you gather about, oh, you backsliding daughter? Have you not heard that God has done a new thing in the earth, that a woman shall encompass a man? Which woman? Which woman shall encompass the man? Any woman? No. The woman that has been prepared to encompass the man. So in the, in the book, we have 12 laws. The first law is the law of um, compliance. That law states that at a certain time in your life, the world will want to make you what it wants you to be. Then would be the time for you to show the world who you really are. You don't have to conform. You don't have to comply with the world standards. Just show the world who you are. Show the world who you are. So we have 12 of such laws. We have the law of generosity. One of those laws is the law of generosity. That law says that the universe will give you all that you want because the universe knows that you will live with nothing. So you can come into this world and be anything, take anything from the world, do anything with it. One thing is sure, even the body that you've come with, the, the world will take from you. So take advantage of everything that you see here. Women have got to understand there is a, the law of the two for a woman to be the kind of woman that will encompass the man, she has to do the listening and learning. If you listen and you learn, then you can make change. You know, you can change things, you can adapt, and you can. There are many laws. It's a fantastic book. I am 
trying myself to live out those 12 laws. And it comes with a workbook. So as you start one law, you can now check, you know, how far you're going with the law and make yourself some notes, fill out some of those questions and see, follow through the laws. I guarantee every woman that reads that book to be a success. Wow. That one, no equivocation whatsoever. If you read that book and do your best to apply those laws, you are an absolute success, nothing else. True. Wow. True. Wow. wow. I want to salute you, you know, because, um, I mean, I, my, I, I see you as a very humble person. Um, you know, did, you took an online course, you know, uh, alongside some of the John Maxwell um, colleagues. Uh, that was during the lockdown. And you, you know, I, I'm happy that you're showing up even now, you know, to to speak. Um, I mean, for you to have learned some things from my humble self on how to uh, become an author. Okay, you're my people. Yes, so you are now more, you know, in fact, you, are, you have now become very versatile and you are showing up, you know. Uh, you are not just a, a speaker, you. you are an author, you are a mother, you are an accomplished uh, public sector person. And you, are, you know, uh, rightfully so, you are speaking on the topic leadership. Now, as we begin to round up, um, what would you like to share? I mean, a few things, some few nuggets as we begin to close this session. Okay. I am very happy for the opportunity to um, share these few thoughts with my viewers today. Whether you're a woman, or you're a man, please always come from the place of gratitude. When you come from the place of gratitude, you will, you will realize so much more than you can see or you can touch that God has done for you. When I wake up every day, I used to wake up and pray and pray, but I learned that I was asking too much. So these days when I wake up, I sit down and thanks. I give thanks, I give thanks, I give thanks. And sometimes I, I don't know what to thank God for, but my mind just says, thank you, thank you. Silent thanks. And whatever you think you're thankful for, you seem to exaggerate it. So, and then when I, when I as I go through the day, I am in, I am in, in traffic, I am sitting there and I am thinking. So I take my mind away from, you know, the blaring of the, of the horns and no, I just sit there and I, I recall the things that I thanked God for and I just keep thanking, I keep thanking, I keep thanking. And um, even when I am disappointed by anyone, I thank God. I just say, oh, thank you for this disappointment. I'm looking seriously to what it's going to teach me i am looking to learn from it show me what it is that i must learn and thanking you so much for the opportunity to speak a lesson and it's helping me so much it's helping me not to begrudge people it's helping me not to hate it's helping me not to be bitter it's helping me so much it's helping me to be content. It's helping me to be strong. It's helping me to love a lot. And I am happy. I am happy. If you can do anything for yourself from tomorrow, from tonight, try laying on your mm. bed and thinking. Just try it. It mm. will change everything about you. It will change every single thing about you. You won't argue. People try to bring up an argument, and then you decline into gratitude. As the person is trying to argue with you, you're already thinking in your heart. And then you're, mm. now, there's no time to argue, so you're like, it's okay, all right, dear. But because you're, you're busy thinking, just sleep in that, that thing. Every time something confronts you, just sit back and say thank you. Thank you. And that's wow. it. It will change wow. everything. It will change everything. Mm -hmm. It's so nice. So you're eating and you're thanking in your heart. You're enjoying the meal. You want to go to bed. You're already thanking and looking at the things that you're thanking him for. And just thank until you sleep. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You're in the bathroom. You're 
you want to do something, you're saying, I am thanking you ahead of this thing that I want to do today. Thank you so much for this system. You want to open your system, you're thanking. Thank you for this system. Thank you about what I'm going to pick from it. Thank you for what is going to serve me to today. You know, it, it's 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 a beautiful experience. It's been glorious for me. I don't know how I started it, but it's helping me a lot. I want you to try it. Wow. Try it. Wow. Wow. Try it. Wow. Try it. No, no, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm. I've learned I've learned quite a bit from you tonight. I mean, it's it's so fascinating. I mean, your your perspective it shows that you are you are you are a very diverse and very deep lady. Um, now I just want to even as we close, who are your mentors? Who are your mentors? Because I'm sure that this must be coming from somewhere deeper. Yeah. Okay, like I already said, I have a role model. That one is cast in concrete. Nothing is going to change. Christ Jesus, first, first, first. Okay. Then I admire Harriet Tubman so much. Harriet Tubman is my lifetime mentor. And this chick, Deborah, and then Benez Abutu, she is my all time mentor. The other person that I that is mentoring me remotely is Indra Nui. I love her. I'm following her. I'm learning from her. Those will be my mentors. My mother was my friend, remains my friend, even as she had passed. And those are all. Wow. Those are all the mentors. So, so you have more of women mentors than men mentors. How about John Maxwell, John C. Maxwell? Ooh, John is my leader. Okay, John is John my leader. leader. He, he influences me. All together, he shows the way, he goes the way, he encourages me. John is an ultimate leader. John, John is more than a mentor. You can't even put him there. John is my leader wow. perpetual. Wow, 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 wow. Amazing, amazing. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, we've been, listening to, we've been listening to Eunice, Eunice Thomas, a very humble lady, a fascinating lady. Um, she's speaking all the way from Akwa Ibom State. Apaibom State is, uh, you know, in the south south of Nigeria. Incidentally, I I, I did my report in Apaibom State, you know, decades ago, you know, in a place called Afansit, you know, and I still have, you know, the rare privileges of um, rare privilege rather of visiting Apaibom from time to time. Uh, the people of Apaibom are very hospitable, and their food is very wonderful. They have a kind called Afan soup, you know. Um, yeah, so <laughs> so they're they are amazing, you know. Um, so um, any any you know word that you just want to drop before we close now? I just want to appreciate those of us that have been on this platform and have been listening, you know, attentively and also uh, been with us during the slight glitch, you know, uh, technology called uh, glitch. Uh, just one word. Passing short as you as we close the session tonight. Wow, my lovely people, thank you for the privilege of your time. I pray the Lord to give you a beautiful week ahead. I look forward to more of these times with you. And please Amen. remember to come from the place of gratitude. Stay thankful and watch your life transform. God bless you. Good wow. night. Thank you, wow. my coach, wow. Wow. for hosting me. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So thank you everyone for joining us. Um I trust you have a great day. Thank you. All right. Have a